guys let me just chime in real quick how you doing happy sunday all right i want to talk about the catastrophic event that happens before every discard it's always going to be a big fight all right uh everybody's fight style is different but it always is some kind of deeply rooted ass argument before it happens okay so here's mine so in my case um, my ex narc decided that day when he woke up that he was going to spend the entire day inside of my walk-in closet. Now he was going to spend the entire day inside of my walk-in closet in an efficiency, which means we had to walk through the closet to get to the bathroom because that's where the bathroom was, right? Meaning he would be in, in, um, like he would be visible openly just there. He was tall too. So he was like kind of the length of my damn closet floor. So he made sure that he was laying there on purpose on a makeshift bed that he had made for himself in my closet, unprovoked, no no argument had happened, on his phone, only facing himself so that it was an ambiguity, it was ambiguous to who he was talking to, why he was talking to them or whatever, but he made sure that he was in my walk-in closet and that I had to step over him and past him all day long just to use the restroom or for the kids to use the restroom, okay? So there's that. Of course, this happened and went on all the way through to nighttime. So that's literally at least 12 hours of him just acting like a bitch like that, right? And I'm like unprovoked, mind you. So that's, remind that. Okay, remember that. So yeah, unprovoked. And so eventually he knew what? He knew that eventually I was going to be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why are you acting like this? What's going on? Who the fuck are you on the phone with all day long like this, right? Because we were married. And even if you're not married, if you're in a relationship, of course, you're going to be like, what's your deal, bro? And every time I asked him throughout the day, he would be like, I mean, nothing. I'm just not, not ready to talk to you right now. And of course, it was like, for what? Like, why? Right? He knew that that was going to get under my skin. And it did work. Right? Now, why did this happen? Hmm? How did this happen? This happened because narcissists know when they're going to discard you. And in my case, he, he knew he was going to discard me the, the following day. And I think the only reason he discarded me the day after that situation is because his supply at the time maybe wasn't ready to take him in that particular night that we were having this uh, disagreement that he had built up. Had she been ready to take him in that night, he would have gone that night. But I think whatever their agreement was meant that she couldn't take him in until the next day for whatever reason. Moving along, though, narcissists have to build a semi false case against you in order to have something, mm, something kind of real to blame you about when they do this discard. Let me explain now reactionary abuse for all of you guys who don't know is obviously when uh the narcissist does something so abusive to you that it causes a response which can then be classified as abusive only the reason why you did that to them is it was out of response to what they were already doing to you right kind of like if i hit you and you hit me back the law can call you abusive, but really it was a self-defense thing. Only thing is, narcissists use a lot of neglect and bad words and breaking your things and doing other things or being abusive to your pet or to your kids or something like that to where they don't have to touch you to ev invoke a response that is violent. So that way they can say, look at you, this person's violent, when really you were defending something like your your animal or someone like your child or your elderly parent or whatever or yourself to where like you had no other choice but to respond with physical action okay but that's not what police care about and narcissists know that so they always do things like what he did was spend the whole day in my closet in plain sight being an inconvenience where I had to step over him to use the restroom and so did my child, right? In order to eventually evoke what eventually turned out to be a physical response from me, right? So that's how that works. Whenever you're about to be discarded, there will be a catastrophic event, catastrophic meaning like an emotional catastrophic event, some kind of 
really insane argument that was um, due to the provocation of the narcissist because they need you to flip out, but they need you to flip out hard. And they've been working on you for a long time and they know this, right? Unbeknownst to you, you just feel fatigued from this relationship, but they know that they have been intentionally, with intention, working on you here and here this whole time. So they know that when they're about to leave, by them doing whatever it is they have chosen to do to you, right? Before the discard, they know that it's going to be something that needs to happen hard enough that it sets you over the edge so much so that they can use your response as a valid excuse as to why they had no choice but to leave you. Okay? Now, we all know that's bullshit, right? But everybody else has already been smear campaigned, right? Everybody else already has been hearing how you were just gradually becoming a piece of shit, right? So it's only natural for them to believe that you finally exploded beyond repair this time and that narcissist had no choice but to leave you and save themselves because you're, you're just crazy, and you just flipped out. You went all, you flew off the handle and it was so bad this time that they had to pack their bags and get out of there. But really, they had their new supply secured and it was time to jump ship. So since they're so concerned with the way that they look to other people, of course they had to set you up. They had to set you up, meticulously set you up to where you exploded with reactionary abuse so much so to the point that they could use whatever that reaction was as a valid excuse to go where they had already packed their bags to go, which was discard you into the new supply zone, right? Example, they they said something so bad that you smacked them or something, right? They said something so disturbing and gross, even if it was a threat, that you haul off and you smack them, or you throw away something that's their favorite thing, or you or they threw something away of yours and you threw something away of theirs that was even more significant to them. They're gonna erase everything they did and said and tell everyone on the way out. He or she threw away my favorite thing. He or she smacked me. They're never going to say ever what they said or did that that caused that response from you. But they're going to use it as a half-truth to tell all of their friends and family about how bad you were. God forbid you leave a mark on them. God forbid you end up having to actually physically respond to them. And there is a bruise or, or something. Because they're going to show everybody that bruise and be like, oh my God, look at what they did. You see, I'm so hurt. This is them all the time. When really, they threw, a, they threw something at you and you threw something back. It just happened to hit them and it didn't hit you. But because it hit them and it didn't hit you, that bruise on them is now going to be their excuse as to how abusive and gross you are. They might even try to get your ass arrested. So that they can even have a, a physical prison thing going on. Well, not even prison, but, you know, jailbird thing going on. Oh, look at her. Look at him. He's in jail. She's in jail because cause she just couldn't keep, or he or she couldn't keep their hands. Look at this bruise. Not going to say, well, I threw this thing at them and they ducked. But when they threw it back at me, it smacked me in the face. So, like, oh, my God. Like, look, now, you see why You see I'm with, why I'm with Rebecca over there now instead of instead of uh, Charlene? Because Rebecca, Rebecca saved me from Charlene. No, you were fucking Rebecca while you were married to Charlene anyway. You see why I had to go over there to Charles because Adam just can't get right. If Adam was a better person, I wouldn't be with Charles. No, bitch. You were sucking Charles' dick anyway behind Adam's back, who was probably working and busting his ass uh, at a job to support you both out of love while you were playing them with disrespect. Right? While you were over there being a Judas, they were trying to do the right thing. So anyway, 
Um, and for those of you guys um, who who have had or run into what I ran into, which was seemingly every time you, and when you get the, the discard happens to you, all of a sudden their friends come out of nowhere. And they seem to be in every establishment that you go into. They seem to be in the grocery stores, uh, the UPS store, the mail, the mail room, um, on the street, maybe at your kid's school, maybe all of a sudden their kid goes to school with your kid, whatever it is, and all of a sudden they come out the woodworks going, oh, we heard what happened. What do you mean you heard what happened? What is that? And it's always a story about how you just flew off the handle when really, more than likely, it was a calculated event by the narcissist for you to have some form of reactionary abuse so they could justify leaving you with some form of truth behind it without giving the whole story. And if you haven't left the narcissist yet, keep a lookout for that. When you see that you are being provoked in a way that that narcissist obviously has to know you in order to know that that is a button that you just never fucking push. That's that nitro button on the race car that you just don't push unless it's like really, really bad and you don't think you can win. When they start putting their finger on that button, get up out of there because they're trying to provoke you to do something that's so irreversible so that they can use it in order to discard you like they already plan on doing anyway, likely months before they even did it. Anyway, all right. I hope that made sense. Love you guys. Have a really good week. Happy Sunday.